dear students last time you have studied classification of living organisms based on five kingdoms which was proposed by one of the scientists named Whittaker in 1959 what was the classification explained or what was the concept of Whittaker Whittaker classified living organisms into two main parts what are the two main divisions of the Whittaker's classification that if you study then there is prokaryotic and a eukaryotic all living organisms are classified into two main parts one division is called prokaryotic and second one is called eukaryotic what is meant by prokaryotic prokaryotic means where there is no nucleus prokaryotic cells do not have true nucleus this nucleus is present but the nuclear organelles are not bounded with specific membrane means nucleus without nuclear membrane is the group of prokaryotic cell what is the example of the prokaryotic then there is a subdivision made of gonera and its example comes bacteria means bacteria have nucleus but they don't have nuclear membrane understand so group of living organisms in which nucleus have no nuclear membrane or the nuclear organelles are without nuclear membrane called a prokaryotic living organisms second group is eukaryotic eukaryotic means what there is a true nucleus present all nuclear organelles and cytoplasm or protoplasm is bounded with nuclear membrane and thus prokaryotic and eukaryotic these are the two main divisions of the living organisms which was told by robert whitaker 1959 now then these eukaryotic cells are divided into again two sub divisions one is called a unicellular and second one is called a multicellular unicellular means what those animals are made from those animals or plants who made from single cell that is called a unicellular for example protista chlorella in case of the plant chlorella is unicellular plant and here then protista Protein. What are the examples of the proteins? Amoeba, Paramecia, Plasmodia. These are the examples of the unicellular living organism. And second one is that that multicellular. This multicellular is again subdivided into two parts. What are the two parts? The two parts are the with cell wall and without the cell wall. Multicellular living organisms are divided into two parts. with cell wall and without cell wall then with cell wall there are autotrophic with cell wall autotrophic and heterotrophic these are the two sub divisions under autotrophic or plantae is all plants autotrophic is all green plants comes under autotrophic and second one is the heterotrophic means those who are depend for their food on the other living organisms they are called heterotrophic and its example is fungi now second under multicellular without the cell wall means animalia we do not have cell wall we have cell membrane but cell wall is absent in animals and therefore thus living organisms are divided into two main groups prokaryotic and eukaryotic prokaryotic example is the gonera and its example is the bacteria second one is the eukaryotic cells are unicellular multicellular multicellular is divided into two main parts with cell wall and without cell wall with cell wall are divided into two parts what is the plant and second one is the fungi means autotrophs and heterotrophs now the without cell wall animalia by this way you have taken information about the classification of living organisms in previous class 
In this class today we are going to study about the classification of plants. So how plants are classified? That first, what is the criteria for the classification of plants? We must have to study criteria. Criteria for classification. Classification of plants. What is the criteria? First criteria is there that vascular means conducting tissue, vascular and non-vascular. Vascular and non-vascular means what? Whether conducting tissues are present or not. To carry the food material, to carry the water, to carry the mineral, there is a specific kind of circulatory system is required. Conducting system is required. So plants having vascular cells and plants having no vascular cells means vascular and non-vascular means conducting tissue is the main criteria for the classification of plants. Then what is second criteria? Second criteria is flowering and non-flowering. Flowering and non-flowering. Flowering and non-flowering means some plants have hidden reproductive system and some plants have open reproductive system. So those plants are producing the as its own kind by spore formation means asexual without producing flowers. So non-flowering and flowering means presence of flowers, presence or absence of flower is the criteria for the plant classification. Next is there that atotrophic means their nutrition is also criteria. Those plants have chlorophyll, they are producing their own food themselves and therefore they are called atotrophic nutrition. And second one is that heterotrophic means non-chlorophyll, non-chlorophyll means chlorophyll is absent in some of the plants and therefore they do not produce their own food themselves. Therefore nutrition is also one of the criteria flower producing flower having flowers or non-flowers that is criteria conducting tissue is also main important criteria for the classification of plants besides that then plants are classified plants are classified according to their size plants are classified according to the uh, terrestrial system in some plants are amphibious plants some plants are totally terrestrial plants some plants are aerial plants, so their habitat is also criteria. Habitat is also criteria. The second criteria is their size. Size. Some plants are traveling plants. Some plants are growing up till two to three foot or near about one meter, and some plants are growing more than hundred meter in height. So according to their size, plants are classified as a herb, shrubs and tree. Then besides that, plants are producing flowers and flowers are producing fruits. According to that fruits, plants are divided into gymnosperm and as a angiosperm under phanerogamsa. Then there is another one criteria that some plants life is very short and some plants are surviving for number of years so biennial annual biennial and perennial these this is also classification means lifespan lifespan size lifespan then nutrition then producing flowers or not producing flowers not producing flowers and conducting system these are the different criteria are used for the classification of plants. After looking this criteria, now we are going to see that how plants are classified. How plants are classified. So here already how plants are classified that any plant is, if we want to classify the plants, then plants are classified under the kingdom plantae. 
इंगडम प्लांटी और प्लांट इंगडम एंड दीज ऑल प्लांट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आर डिवाइडेड इन टू टू ग्रुप्स वन इज देयर क्रिप्टोगेमस एंड सेकेंड ग्रुप इज देयर फेनेरोगेमस वॉट आर द स्पेसिफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द क्रिप्टोगेम्स एंड वॉट आर द स्पेसिफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द फेनेरोगेम्स क्रिप्टोगेम्स मीन्स दो नॉट प्रोड्यूस देयर those who do not produce flower means flowerless not flowering plants besides that non vascular non vascular means what specific kind of conducting tissue system is absent no xylem no phloem and then second one is that not producing flower non flowering means they do not produce seeds they do not produce seeds The, if there are no seeds, if there are no flower, it means that they have hidden reproductive system. Understand difference? What is? What are the main characteristics of cryptogams? Cryptogams means non-flowering plants. Means they do not produce seeds. Means they have hidden reproductive system. And vascular system is absent. Means there is no conducting system. So these are called cryptogams. Now second group is the phanerogams. So in case of phanerogams, these are producing flowers. These are producing flowers means they are producing fruits. Producing fruits means they are producing seeds. So means seed bearing plant. This is seedless plant. This is seed bearing plant. And therefore, instead of hidden, instead of hidden. reproductive system they have their own sexual reproductive system as well as there is a sexual reproductive system also found in the phanerogams now most of the phanerogams plants are living on land means these phanerogams group of plants under phanerogams are terrestrial okay now specifically we are going to take information or study about the cryptogamous means here kingdom planty is divided into two parts cryptogamous phanerogamous and cryptogamous is divided into three subdivisions or three subphyla one is that halophyta second one is that bryophyta and third one is that pteridophyta halophyta means what thallus like body body is not divided not divided into into roots leaf and stem understand halophyta means what thallus like body thallus like body there is no distinguish between root leaf and stem means body is not divided into many part, important parts of the plant that are roots leaves and stem so these roots leaves and stem are absent in the halophyta then mostly these halophyta are growing in water growing in water understand now second part is that what is the example of halophyta example of halophyta is all algae And under algae, cara, then sargassa, sargassa, and spirogyra, spirogyra. Okay, halophyta, halophyta means thallus like body. Body is not distinguished, or body is not differentiated as a root, leaf, and stem. Most of the halophyta are growing inside the water, and they. do not have specific conducting conducting system its example is there algae and under algae there are near about 350 species are found from them some examples are mentioned in your textbook is spirogyra means here it is a rectangular shaped body you may see in your textbook here it is proof proof is shown like that is rectangular shape of thallus like body this is uh, having chloroplast cytoplasm nucleus everything is there cell membrane and cell wall is also present and this is the 
the example this picture is drawn of spirogyra so spirogyra is an example of the halophyta now second part is that is bryophyta what are the characteristics of bryophyta bryophyta are amphibious amphibious plants bryo bryophyta are amphibious plants means they grow mostly in moist soil grow in moist soil bryophyta are growing in moist soil but for reproduction for reproduction they are in need of water then body of bryophyta is also not distinguished as a root no true root no root no leaf no stem in sir there is a root like structure that is not a root but a root like structure that are called a rhizoids there are rhizoids root like structure no true root that is rhizoid and stem like structure but that is not a that is not stem and the leaf somewhere you can see that leaf like structure but actually these are not true leaves no true stem up these bryophyta are ribbon shaped ribbon shaped and having flat body flat ribbon shaped body found in the bryophyta its example is there moss or funeria moss or funeria marcensia marcensia rixia and anthoceros anthoceros which are the examples are given in your textbook moss that is funeria marcensia rixia and anthoceros anthoceros these are the four examples given one more time i am going to tell about bryophyta bryophyta are amphibious plants these are growing in these are growing in moist soil these are growing even on the wet wall wherever there is a moisture it is these plants can grow but for the reproduction they are in need of the water and therefore for reproduction if there is water available they can reproduce otherwise can't their body is not differentiated as a root leaf and stem but root like structure is found leaf like structure is found and even uh, stem like structure is also found but uh, these three parts are not uh, true roots not true leaves not true stem its example is uh, their body structure is ribbon like flat body flat body or ribbon like body an example is given in your textbook is moss funeria moss or funeria then rixia marcensia and another example is the anthoceros now third part third part is stereophyta means shade loving shade loving plants shade loving plants these plants have vascular tissues these plants have vascular tissues means xylem and phloem these are the important conducting tissues are present in the pteridophyta their body is divided into root this pteridophyta have root stem and leaves but they do not produce flower do not produce flower do not produce seeds then how is the reproduction take place reproduction take place by spore formation spore formation here in case of this bryophyta also there is a spore formation because this bryophyta are also unable to <coughs> unable to produce the seeds so pteridophyta example is given for for silaginella silaginella are the examples of the pteridophyta pteridophyta are shade loving small plants these are very small plants vascular system conducting tissues are present body is 
differentiated into roots and leaves do not produce flower or do not produce seeds but there is a reproduction system taken place by a sexual way means that is by spore formation example is that for sida genera equisetum equisetum is also example of the pterygophyta so thus under kingdom plant kingdom or kingdom planti there are two groups cryptogamous and phanerogamous and we have studied about the cryptogamous cryptogamous is divided into three parts one is the therophyta bryophyta and pteriophyta i have wrote here all these examples you should have to read once again in house study the examples see the pictures even you can see on youtube channel or you can take support of internet that can bring live plants before you its pictures its videos are available on youtube also you have to take support of it for better understanding now we are going to study about the phanerogams phanerogams one more time i am going to tell its important characters phanerogams vascular means conducting tissues are present they are producing flowers fruits are developed and seeds are also developed inside the seed or seeds are produced inside the fruit or outside the fruit next one is that these phanerogams have bisexual or unisexual plants means male female plants are different these are the main parts besides that these phanerogams are also divided into two main parts i will write here phanerogams phanerogams are divided into two main parts gymnosperm 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 and second part is the angiosperm angiosperm so before looking this characters of gymnosperm and angiosperm once again i want to remind you that if you are not subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel write your comments and share your like also tell to your all friends and relatives about this channel and let them take benefit of our videos now gymnosperm phanerogams means flowering plants flower producing plant this flower producing plants have two groups one is gymnosperm and angiosperm gymnosperm means naked seeds naked seeds and angiosperm means enclosed seeds enclosed enclosed seeds these gymnosperms have no branches have no branches tall trees tall trees have no branches fruits fruits produced fruits produced but seeds are seeds are open means naked seeds are outside uh, male and male and female flowers lies on same sporophyll same sporophyll or sporophyta so male and female gametes in male flower female flower lies on sporophyta these are the examples of the gymnosperm mostly these plants are found in a cold region these plants are growing in cold region means if we want to see about this plant then we will get the examples of these plants in himalayan region what are the examples cycas pine devdar these are the examples mentioned in our textbook so let one more time see naked seeds naked seeds means seeds have no cover seeds are out of roots 
tall trees most of the plants are tall no branching system they grow like a coconut tree there is no branch system and uh, produces flowers the flowers means sporophylls and this sporophyll contains male gametes as well as female gametes in a same sporophyll the same example is the cycas pine deuda means these are called woody plants woody plants wood is most important thing means wood of the general form is economically very very important now second group is the angiosperm angiosperm means seeds are encoded producing flowers producing fruits producing seeds and seeds are encoded inside the fruit these angiosperms are of three types actually herbs crawling plants crawling plants herbs shrubs and trees means according to their height crawling means weak stem plant that is called a crawling plant herbs means you know example of tulsi or grass second shrub means uh, it is uh, just like a uh, lime tree you know lime tree and uh, second one is a uh, tree means very tall trees like mango neem banyan pepper tree these are the examples of angiosperms angiosperms are mostly evergreen plants these angiosperms are found all over the world these angiosperm plants are again divided into two groups what are the two groups of the angiosperm that we will see angiosperms are divided into two groups one is the mono monocotyledon monocotyledonous plants and second one is the dicotyledonous plants monocotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous what is the difference in monocotyledon monocotyledon means seeds have single cotyledon single cotyledon means if you want to break the seed you can't get two equal parts for example wheat jowar maize etc you try to break it into equal two parts you can't divide it into you can't get two equal parts means that seeds are made from single cotyledon now, now there is a single cotyledon adventitious 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 root system adventitious root system is what suppose there this is a stem then here are fiber like number of fibers means thread like roots are present that is called a adventitious root system is present in the monocotyledonous now parallel leaf venation parallel leaf venation means there are number of veins however veins are present in our body veins are present in our body so in case of these leaf for example maize tree for example jowar tree in case of these all this is a mid vein and rest of the veins are parallel to each other so parallel leaf venation found in the monocotyledonous adventitious roots are present in monocotyledonous and seed is made from single cotyledon seed is made from single cotyledon this example is maize jowar wheat etc most of the monocotyledonous plant most of the monocotyledonous plants are annual means their life span is very short now dicotyledonous dicotyledonous means two cotyledons are present two cotyledons seed is made from two cotyledons then then there is tap root system tap root system here no branches here another example is that no branches here branches are present 
branching system it has branches sir now what i told two polygons and roots branches are present and uh, seeds are growing for these are also annual biennial and perennial then what about the leaf vegetation system leaf in case of leaf vegetation system reticulate vegetation a reticulate vegetation is found in dicotyledonous plant reticulate for example i will draw here sample leaf of this is the leaf of people tree then in case of this how leaf vegetation is found in the people tree there are so many veins are creating network they are intermingled to each other and thus this reticulate vegetation system this is called a reticulate vegetation system is present in the dicotyledonous its an example is the groundnut its an example is the grams mango cashew nut are the examples still there are number of examples found in the dicotyledonous plant so thus here today i have explained a classification of plant this lesson is here completed if you have a difficulty once again i will request you that you have to observe this video again and again subscribe this channel and read yourself even if you want to look the pictures of these all different kind of plants then you go for go on youtube there are number of videos are available regarding classification of plants but uh, don't go so deep no need how much part whatever points are given the all points i have covered uh, see that much only points thanks for watching very much